All right, I want us to have a laid-back discussion. As much as we're discussing COVID-19 and how it's affected our social life, let's do it while chilling, having a laid-back conversation about this. Because a lot of us may be able, idle rather for the next two weeks. So what are we going to do about that? We're seeing the social life moving to online space, and we're going to be discussing that in just a little bit. I have two amazing people with me here in studio this morning, looking lovely. One is wearing socks that you can spot all the way from us. The other one is wearing a kimono. She's looking amazing. I'm talking about none other than Sheila Masharia. She's an artist and an activist. Good morning. Morning. Let me salute you? you from afar. Yambali. Sorry. Yambali, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> then we also have <laughs> David Chalo, who's an event organizer. Asante Sana. Uh, you want to show the nation your socks. You're like, nobody can stop <laughs> back. Eh? There you go. Sir. There you go. Yeah, after coming to COVID-19, in lazima my socks is a poor. You know? <laughs> All right, guys. Now, here's the thing. Um, let's start off by you guys giving me a sneak peek into the conversations that young people are having right now, whether it's on WhatsApp groups, whether it's at Jobo, whether it's in the social circles. What is happening? What are young people saying, Sheila? Like within your social circles, what are you hearing? Um, I think we can start off like when COVID started in the other countries, in China, in Italy, in the US, people were mainly just starting with jokes, mm. you know, many, many jokes online. But when we got the first case reported in Kenya, now you could feel the panic in people's voices and in, no, in yeah. their own lives. But now I think most guys are really worried about especially losing income yeah. as well as the social scene. Because mm. now you have to be home, you have to have a social distance. Those are the conversations I'm hearing around me. Mm. Yeah. Did any of your girls do that quick rush shopping on Friday and went and bought every tissue <laughs> paper on the aisle, every sanitizer they could find. <laughs> Did any of your people do that? My sister, ah. she has been obsessing and reading and ah. doing all those things. So yeah, people are really, you know, losing their minds okay. a bit. Yeah. David, what are the men saying? <coughs> Actually, it's pretty scary. At some point, I didn't take it. Um, I thought it's something that's probably going to, you know, go. Um, until now, like her sister. Mm. I started becoming obsessed with it from Saturday. Mm. So I think on first Saturday when I was looking at the death tolls, I think what, 4,000 4, 4, 4, 4, and something? Global cases. Global cases. Uh, Monday it was 5,000. I remember I think Wednesday it was 7,000 and something. Mm. Now we are 10,000. Mm -hmm. So remember we are in a very advanced technology world. And if this is moving too fast, then I also had read up something about the... Um, Spanish flu. I'm not trying to make you scared or something, <laughs> but if it's compared with the same Spanish flu that happened in 1918, which killed almost 50 million people, I think it's a it's a pretty messy, messy, messy thing. Mm. And considering that most of the advanced countries, first world countries, cannot contain it, I'm wondering if it came here, how bad it's going to be. So for you, you're saying it made you, you know. Get a l it got your attention on Saturday. Yes. Here's the thing. Where were you on Sunday evening when President Uru Kenyatta stood up and told the nation? Actually, I was in the mm -hmm. house. You were in the house? The what last what time what I went out was on Saturday. Uh -huh. Then I don't think I'm going anywhere. Sheila, when was the last time you went out? It was actually on Thursday. On Thursday? Yeah. And, so, and that was for you the last time you went out? But doesn't mean I have corona. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just asking. Yeah, th I think that, that was the last time. I think now I'm more cautious with, uh, without everything that I'm doing. Mm. Um... I think I've not washed my hands in uh, like consistently in a single day like I've done in the last seven days. Right. Uh, because I think Kama say has been refined thrice, mm. and the day is still not even at eight a.m. So here's the thing, David. When you're talking to Kenyans, mm. David by profession is an event organizer, so automatically he's a chit chat box. So here's the thing, David. When you're talking to Kenyans, mm. are they sounding more positive about this corona that you know this thing will go away? Or are they more concerned? What, what what are people feeling? Is it more positivity that we got this? Or no, finally, Corona will go away. But I think uh, as Kenyans, as the government, we need to we need to put our systems in in check. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to prepare more uh, because uh, talking of a facility that's going to contain only thirty five people and the population of fifty million, mm. uh, don't think it's right in this day and age. So I think we need to be more, more, more cautious in terms of our healthcare. Uh, they have, like, the, just the, the way we have like uh, three basic needs: food, shelter, clothing. We should ha we should maybe add something like uh, health, and maybe education. That should be like 
major basic things mm. a Kenyan should have. Here's the thing, David, you're an event organizer. A lot of the conversations that pe are happening right now is that I had this funeral to go to over the weekend, I had this wedding to do, I had branch activities. We People had all these different activities that were lined up. What is happening within the circle of event organizers, whether it is for weddings, whether it's for funerals, whether it is for corporate events, what are event organizers talking about right now? And how has it affected event organizers? I think actually in our industry, it is uh, majorly hit. Mm. Personally, I have over 12 events that have been canceled all at a go. In the, and that's just the month and of that's, March? And uh, that's, that's for March alone. Okay, Feb? Uh, no, Feb, Feb nothing okay. was canceled, we were okay. You were busy. I have a friend that uh, they've cancelled an activation, a country wide activation that was supposed to run for four months non-stop mm, mm. that has been cancelled, put on hold as well. Mm -hmm. Everybody that I know in the events industry, uh, literally are jobless till Corona ends because it's, it involves gathering and you can't do anything about it. Uh, and then it affects guys that we, we always contract uh, because we deal with DJs, we deal with... Uh, artists, you deal with uh, marketers, right. you deal with guys doing the road shows. So it's an ecosystem that comes down. Mm. That's a single industry. Mm. Uh, take another different industry, say the tours and travel. Mm. It trickles down to even somebody that does not know what's really happening, why it's, why it's affecting them. So it's really bad So David, for, for you, you've lost 12 events just it's in the month of for March. For me, it's a loss. All right, Sheila, uh -huh. what's happening? You're an artist on the entertainment side. What, what, what does it look like? How is it affecting your calendar? How is it affecting the entertainment space here in Kenya? I am actually not an artist. Mm -hmm. I am a content creator mm -hmm. in terms of um, doing online work. And in the same space, just like you said, with the many cancellation of events, you find engagements that you've had with clients. Maybe you were pushing an event for someone, a run or something. Right. Everything has been put on hold because this has never happened before. So they don't know how do we proceed with this. If a client, their end goal was for you to push a gig for them, mm. now the gig has been cancelled. Does mm. that mean they don't pay you or do they pay you part? It's really, I think right now many people are still trying to figure it out because it's, it's very confusing when it comes to such mm. engagements. He here's the thing, David. I came across a, f uh, uh, a friend who told me she's had to cancel or postpone her wedding. The event organizers were my Qatar. Right now, how do you mm -hmm. handle a sensitive relationship with your event organizers? How do you handle a relationship with that? Because weddings are the biggest thing that is being affected right now, even in our social scenes when we're talking. I'm sure um, out of the 12 events that you had, how many of them were weddings? Um, uh, our line majorly focused on corporates. On corporates. Um, but in Ngomu Kurudisha deposit. Yeah, but so <laughs> what is that relationship like right now? Event uh, planners and their clients. But for instance, uh, there's a, I'll give you a single uh, event that we've done a booking. Yes. So normally for us, uh, if it's a conference, we love to do the whole booking, pay the hotel, uh, pay anything that needs to be done, then you pay it later. So we paid to Hotel X, everything, literally, like a hundred, hundred percent payment. And then on a Sunday evening, we get a, an email and a call that we've canceled it. Now you have to call the hotel and tell them uh, this has been cancelled. And you see now the, in the contract, you have to give them a notice of around 30 days. So already the, now you're already breaching the contract. So it's really hard to, to put like everything, uh, like to contain the, the relation without compromising your profits and all that. Mm -hmm. it's, really, it's really hard because mm -hmm. now you have to balance a situation whereby you're not making losses, you're not losing your relation. At the same time, uh, mind in Corona, mm -hmm. so it's pretty tough. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, Sheila, uh -huh. the other thing is, as even as a create <coughs> content creator, what would you tell the best way to keep young people, especially children? Let's not even come to young people our age, the youth, young yeah. children right now. Uh -huh. What's the best way to keep them busy socially? Because everything is moving now to online, uh -huh. especially right now with gatherings having here in Kenya yeah. to be limited. Uh -huh. Social life is online now. That's true. Um, I really don't want to speak with authority on this since I'm not a parent, but being online, I've seen parents share things that they are doing with their children. So a lot of people are moving to using YouTube mm -hmm. to educate their children, mm. even if it's just not main school work, stream wor mainstream school work. Yeah. They're using YouTube just even to explain to the kids what this virus is and what it's doing. I think uh, kids are now just watching TV at home right. and playing games. 
that's the only way to keep them busy at this point. Here's the thing, how can we as young people, as youth, be at the forefront when it comes to sensitization? Because unlike maybe our parents' days, mm -hmm. we have the advantage of, you have your own network, this, your yes, phone. Yes, yes. You your YouTube, your social media in itself is just a network of its own. Mm -hmm. How can we as young people be more positive when it comes to sensitization? I think, first of all, the first step is um, we all need to be very wary about the information we are sharing online. Right. So this starts by you doing a lot of research just to get to understand this um, disease and the effects and what is happening. So just don't jump on a bandwagon of sharing those fake forwards mm. or posting content on Twitter or Instagram that you have not verified. So I think we need to um, read a lot. Also, I think it's a personal thing. Mm. We need to understand that not just because you're okay, um, because you don't have corona right now, doesn't mean you can't catch it if you got Here's there. the thing, Sheila, mm. as a content creator, yes. are young Kenyans cautious about what they share on their own, whether it's their own personal um, um, timelines mm -hmm. or on WhatsApp groups, platforms that maybe they share? Are young Kenyans cautious or do we just see people just forwarding things on the groups that we're in or just posting things on our timelines out of, you know, without thinking? I think it's so-so. Mm. Some people, they will share anything mm -hmm. to get the clout, just to get the retweets and the likes. But if you're really genuine and you want your social media to be, um, to keep that, um, like, you know, the, the truth in it. Right. You should be able to share only what you can verify and only what you know is true. Mm -hmm. yeah. David? But I think um, uh, we as young people are somehow reckless. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that I'll admit. Uh, because we, we don't think when uh, the repercussion of just sending a single message and what it does. Uh, I'll give you an example. There, there was an audio panic about uh, somebody that had corona. It was not, it was not uh, real and not verified. Yeah. A friend of mine said it from South Africa to me. And it, remember, it's Kenyan. So I wondered how many times it had circulated before it got there. Wow. So somebody just forwarded in. Or somebody, you know, just, just fake news. But remember, fake news leads to more guys panicking, mm. makes people uh, more reckless, like this guy that ran out of the hospital and disappeared. You right. see, that's, that's more fear. You're right. Because it'll be like, I can't die alone. Mm. You see? So the same thing will, be, uh, will happen if somebody detected the same symptoms. They'll be like, uh, let me just transmit it before. Because it's, for them, it's more fear than taking precaution. So we as young people, we need to be mindful of what we share online, what we share on WhatsApp, what we share on all platforms, um, just to contain these. Because in this digital world, news spreads very fast. Mm. Like in a single second, thousands, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of messages are being forwarded. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys even saw that video, that, that video where um, two Chinese people or two Asian people were being bullied at an informal settlement here in Kenya, yeah. right? How do we even begin to handle that social stigmatization? Because it's amongst us, our age group. Mm -hmm. Yes. Actually, <laughs> I saw one in, um, I, I, I happened to, uh, to witness one in Thika. So there were Chinese guys and uh, s some young, young, drunk and disorderly guys. So this, they saw them and uh, they started shouting Corona. Uh, for me, I didn't, it, I don't think it's the right way to do it because it's affecting globally. It's not, right. it's not a Chinese problem. Mm. It's not a the US problem. Mm. It's a global problem. Mm. So I don't think we should be able to, we should not point fingers to a certain direction and say this is where it came from or something. Rather, we should think of a way of solving the problem together. Mm. Yeah. Sheila? I think to add on to what David has just said, um, a problem with the young people right now in Kenya is People want to be the first ones to share news yeah. without caring whether it's true or not. Yeah. So, and like what you're saying, that situation with that video, you find that sometimes what is happening online is actually a reflection ab uh, on things on the ground. Mm. So you find, because you'll find that person who took that video is someone who probably just has WhatsApp or just Facebook, but then it picks up and then it goes to all these other platforms. So I don't think dealing with only um, social media is a problem. Education needs to be with everyone else. 
because like sometimes social media is just a mirror on what is happening mm -hmm. on the ground most mm -hmm. of the time uh, what's happening on the ground Here's yeah the thing of what's happening on the ground there's still a few clubs here in Kenya that are still operating. You know, I passed across <laughs> I passed across one of the most famous ones in Langata this morning. Yeah. And I'm wondering, why are you guys here? <laughs> Go home. What is happening on the club, on the social scene, Sheila? Well, let me just hmm. start by saying that I personally love clubbing and going out. Yeah, so what are you going to do this weekend? I'll just sleep. Okay. I don't think any party is so important that you can go out there and put your life and also other people's lives at risk. Um, I think people who are still partying are not being very smart because, I mean, we've seen, uh, hearing stories about Korea and also Italy, mm. how the disease spread like wildfire because of going out. Mm. No one should be going out right now. Mm -hmm. And these clubs also, I feel, you know, sometimes it's conviction. David, should the club owners... They should close there. Yes, should not even be opening those clubs right now? Um... One, in a club, I think actually I would prefer if the churches are open than the clubs. That's right. Because in churches, people are more cautious. Mm. Uh, remember in a club, guys are drunk. Uh, probably you have contamination or something. It's, it's so easy to spread. And if churches and mosques are following, yet th we know the gatherings that happen in churches and mosques are way more than the gatherings that, we happen, that happen in, ba in, in clubs. If they are following the directives, the entertainment sector isn't. But I'm looking at a club, it's a... It's a it's a bigger way of transmitting it because I take a single guy of, uh, that has been in a club mm. drunk. Mm. They probably have the disease. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, they take a cab home. Mm. Uh, probably the cab. The the soon as on the surface. on the surface like twelve hours. Yes, that's one person. So in the club again, they probably transmit uh, guys. They were meet and greeting a lot of many other uh, other mm. things. Probably the place they go to eat before they sleep. It's another area. Uh, the apartment and all that. Mm. So one single person could be a channel to, they could transmit to many, many people. Because again, this person, say it's a Kosoba. Yeah. No, no, they're yeah. drunk. So imagine th that's a single person in probably Langata Road, another one in Westlands, another one in Uku Kitui, in Uko. So imagine all these people, it's so easy mm. To transmit this disease in a very short span. So, David, like uh, uh, what are you going to do with your weekend now that today is Friday? So, kuna vitu na nini unazafanya kwa nyumba. You don't have to go out. Yeah. It's. I think there's nothing better than life. There's nothing. I, I think we take things for granted. There's nothing that you can say it's more or it's worth more than more than your own life. Mm. Drinks will always be there. Partying will always be there. Has mm. been there since even before you were born. So there's nothing important more than your life. And actually, this goes to the young people. Atuski Yangi. Actually, young people, I think we're more ignorant. Actually, you won't find old people in clubs right now. But I have to disagree with David on that in terms of, I get what you're saying about clubs. But you see, look, think about churches. Um, a very small percentage of people who club, you can't compare that percentage to the number of people who go to churches. Same thing you're saying about clubs. Um, having uh, young people. Think about patient 31 in co South Korea. This person went to Hosi, was told to chill there, they went to church to pray, and that's how it spread like wildfire. In churches, you have a higher percentage of older people who we are seeing are more affected by this disease. And a church, I believe, is a, is a bigger social scene for most people who don't club. Mm. So I think all these social public places mm. need to be Mm. Shut down just as precaution, mm. not at the because of Nini Amanini, just but to make but sure I think guys I disagree are okay. as well. Uh, I think, if I'm not wrong, the statistics uh, there are more than I think 30,000 to wines and spirits plus clubs in Nairobi alone. <laughs> wow, mm -hmm. actually, it's true. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's a number of between 20,000 and 30,000. Okay, 20,000 to 30,000, something in Nairobi alone. Mm. Nairobi population ar alone is around 5 million. Mm. You see. So if, and you see these are all checkpoints in every estate. Mm -hmm. There's always a club, a local. Mm -hmm. no. That's mm -hmm. fine. In every estate there's a there's local. A local, yes. Uh, what I'm saying is, a club, somebody who's not sober, probably they'll do the wrong thing. Okay. Ah. No, no, they're not cautious. In guess. terms of, at that time you are under, you're toxic. They you're toxic. Like I'll come, sneeze, hold, and you goose a meza. You see, as in the, I'm, I'm not... I'm not, 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 I'm
Your, 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 personal, your personal activities. Your personal like activities. Be with that like they interact with a lot of people. Right. A lot of people. Uh -huh. Because probably go to their ex's place, uh, <laughs> the cab guy. As in, not a funny bit In a single night, they'll do, they'll interact with a bunch of people. Right. A bunch of many people, you see. So I think. Zifungo tu. All right. Ta, 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 ta resume after corona. That's the thing. I want to know what you're planning to do for this weekend. This is a Friday now that um, social life is sort of being halted as well. What are you planning to do for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? And if you're also not going to work, what are you going to do come Wednesday, tu Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? What are you going to do? Do two double two, double two, four double two rather, is our SMS line. You can also tweet us directly at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag daybreak. Let's take that commercial break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. So majority of people will have to now work from home. I have an event planner here and a content creator. What does that look like? David, working from home as an event planner, what does that look like? There's nothing I'm literally doing from <laughs> home. I'm supposed to be doing events. You know. Um, actually, literally, I'm jobless. Mm. Till, uh, if Corona decided, decides to stay longer, I'll be job jobless longer. Yeah. But anyway, I hope it, it ends. Uh, but again, I realize I have internal hobbies that I could do in the house. I've been actually locked from, I think, Sunday. I've not left the house, actually, from Monday. I've not left the house. I only left once till today. So you can stay indoors. But you must be bored, eh? No. <laughs> actually, I realize you, you, there's so many things you can do in the house. Many. Mm -hmm. mm. Sheila, you're a content creator. I'm sure for you it's a bit easier. It's a bit easier, but the challenge comes in when you have output you have to give out, which involves maybe shooting videos ah. or going out to places. Now with that, with the quarantine that's happening, you really can't go out and start doing shoots right now. Um, like I said earlier, and also as David said, a lot of events have been cancelled. Yeah. So I think it's slowing down a bit because um, contracts are now being put on hold or being postponed. So guys are still trying to figure out what's going to happen. Mm. Mm. Here's the thing, if this is to persist for another two months, mm? yes, <laughs> if, it's to, to, to per if it is to persist, mm -hmm. how will that affect your business? I love what you said, that if you've, you've already lost 12 clients alone in March, you've already been home, 
and you've only left the house once. If this continues even for another month, will you be able to pay your employees? I actually think it's a bad thing if it's, if you, if it's persists for not even a month, not mm. even two months. Mm. How will that affect your business? Uh, most, most of the guys I'm interacting with probably running a business or something. They're saying right now is the highest time to cut costs. You know what cutting costs means? Uh, if I'm paying you, I'm paying probably, I'm paying you half. Because it's even, you, even yourself, you can't, there's no income coming in, okay? Or I'm even not paying you at all. So you see, th this means I'm not even paying my landlord for the office, for the house, and all that. So that is choking money circulation in the economy. When you look at what actually just Nairobi Stock Exchange has happened, actually it has lost billions, it has hundreds of billions. In that short span, I think almost, it leads to almost, if I'm not wrong, I think 540. Uh, and many, 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 many others. So this persists for two months. You see, people are not working. Yeah. So if you're not working, there's no productivity. Mm. There are no products, meaning there's no money. And then even if you have products, nobody to buy because nobody, their focus is to buy shopping in the house, not to buy your services. As a businessman, were you happy with what and were you satisfied with what Uhuru had to say in terms of what they have in place to sort of cushion for business men and women. For you, you know, the government actually said if you actually can show how COVID-19 has affected your business, you are actually legitimate to um, certain recovery packages. For you, as David, were you happy when you heard what the president had to say? Does that make you um, feel much more positive about your business? Feels positive, but again, you see not everybody runs a business. Mm. Uh, at some point, I think on Tuesday, I went to buy the sanitizers. The small one, I think it's 500 bob. Uh, so I assumed. I looked at a family probably just in a, you know, some setting somewhere. Mm. How many people can afford to buy a sanitizer worth 500 shillings? You get it? So it's not enough for just business owners. I think there's so much that can be done to the public. Yeah. Uh, people are not going to work. Nobody was prepared for this. So where do you get money to do even your panic shopping? from you see so there's so much things that can be done apart from this back end of business owners uh, guys in uh, guys who are working remember there are jo a lot of jobless people a lot of jobless people what are we doing for them mm. you know mm. there should be i think some something like a corona kit or something right like a package mm. some food kidogo to your for some time even if it's two weeks or three weeks mm. Because you're not working, there's no money. Uh, the person that was working and you're depending on them, they're not sending you money. You get, you're getting that, yeah. th that triple effect. That triple effect. Yeah. Here's the thing, Sheila. Uh -huh. Can young people uh -huh. um, afford or can they actively, especially what we're calling the millennial generation, yes. can they work from home? Because th can they take that same work ethic that they have when their boss is physically uh -huh. around them uh -huh. and apply that when they're working from home? Um... First of all, um, I have a background in HR, mm. and one of my biggest issues has been that thing of forcing people to do eight to five. Okay. That you have to be at your desk at eight and you leave at five. That for me, I feel usually hurts productivity, especially if you're in an industry where you're able to work remotely. If like maybe you offer support that you don't need to be in an office. I think young people are able to do that now with better internet connectivity. It's something that is possible because you just need to sit down and decide for the next two hours, I'm gonna do this work. I'm going to have to send this report by 2 p.m. Do you think young Kenyans can do that? That discipline that is needed. Okay, I have this report here at 2 p.m. Yeah. And here I am, I've just woken up at 11 a.m. If you're waking up at 11, you probably should have done it overnight. Mm. But I think slowly people should be able to adapt to this. Mm -hmm. It's very, very possible. If other countries are doing it, I don't see why we can't. Mm. Yeah, but I like also what um, David has brought up the aspect of that there's a possibility that young people might lose their jobs out of COVID-19 mm. and we already have a bad number of unemployed young people. Yeah. What are young people saying within your social circles? Are they okay? Do they feel confident that, ah, Nikki Rudy Joe, about two weeks from now, mm. I still have my work? It's, it's very um, shaky in terms of people who are in very secure jobs. The bosses have let them go home and work from home. But people mm. who really, they really don't have an option. Your, your boss is telling you, you still have to come to work. Right. But you know it's, you leaving the house and going to the office every day is you literally putting your life on the line. That matatu you've taken, you don't know if the person who took it yesterday was sick or whatever. People are very 
so so some are okay with it some are very very concerned because i mean some bosses if you don't go to work for three days even this last week they're gonna fire you because like you said there's so many jobless people mm. Finding a replacement for you should not be very hard. David, is, is that the same conversation you're hearing within your own social circles, especially being a person who is in business and you understand the struggles of keeping the lights on? Um, what, what, what is the conversation when it comes to young people and who are unemployed in this economy, even before COVID-19 checked in? And now we have to now counter that. Mm. I think um, there's so many social problems we need to face. Uh, we, need, we need to address first, even before COVID happened, mm -hmm. uh, including that of unemployment. Because you see now that's a, f a problem now that's doubling in this particular, when COVID happened, right. now it's, it's double the problem. Because you have this unemployed person and now they need, they need a, a way to survive through COVID for that particular period. So I think for me, as a nation, as business owners, as everybody in this in this country, we need to we need to address these issues without without no sugarcoating them. Mm -hmm. That we have hope, we have don't sell hope to people. We need solutions for the young people, because now sir, now we are, we are instead of f uh, focusing on COVID, we are focusing on problems that we should have solved long time ago, including in health systems, including unemployment, including you know. Fle flexi, flexi working mm. Mm -hmm. because again mm -hmm. I've realized now people could work from home you see you don't need this people to be in the office right you see that that will also save a lot of a lot of uh, issues in our society so mm. we need to address after COVID I think we need to address all our problems so that in case of emergencies we now focus on the emergency not focusing on the emergency and the other problems that we have mm. yeah. here's the thing Sheila and David how is, how is it that in your own different capacities as an event planner and as a content creator in your industries, what have you done to create awareness, whether it's amongst your employees, your clients, or just each other within your industries? Um, maybe I could start, like for me, um, is using my platform very responsibly mm -hmm. with the information I'm sharing. Right. I don't just press the retweet button mm -hmm. or the like button on any other tweet. Before I share content, I make sure I verify it. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I've used my platform to um, like just show people, my audience, like, oh, this, 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 um, this organization is having this offer. Um, this supermarket have still have these uh, products in their stores. Right. This company is saying if you do transactions with their cards, there is no charge on it. So that's how I'm using my platform to pass on information, even things like um, how you're supposed to take care of, so of yourself. Um, excuse me, during this moment, you washing your hands, you social distance. That's how I'm using my platform. Mm. David. Uh, for me, I think um, I decided I'm not going to forward or sell something that's, even if it's a fact, that's going to probably propel fear. Uh, let a, let a, I decided, let, let me be a champion of uh, now um, selling precautions to people. Yes. Like, I of course, these are, de these are very deadly disease, but again, send solutions to people. Mm -hmm. What do you need to do mm -hmm. to be safe? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a kind of uh, message that you need, because if you sell fear every day, you see, most of the time people die of diseases, even the deadliest. At times it's a mental battle, not even, the, not even about humanity. <coughs> so what we need to do is, you know, just sell hope to people. Even if it's bad, mm. just sell hope. It's going to be okay. All right, we were going to take a look at um, your feedback in just a little bit. But before we do that, here's the thing, David. As a businessman, um, what do you think is the role of businesses when it comes to social responsibility? We've seen... Businesses being cautioned not to increase prices, we, be it our matatus and our transport sector to supermarkets and so forth. Just in, in a social setting like this, what is the corporate social responsibility for business community? And how can they come in to sort of also um, have their hands also in the uh, on the table? I think as much as uh, it's, a it's a capitalist market, mm. I think right now is uh, the highest time to focus on, don't exploit people. It's good to make profits, but again, not at the expense of uh, suffering people. So if there's a company that can come through for, because again, today I read something in the morning, it's more, uh, the disease is likely to spread in rural areas and even in urban yes. because they don't have the capacity. Yes. So if there they are companies, the big companies, you always make profits. If you can even buy sanitizers, mm. 
even do campaigns to educate people in Ushago. Nobody's telling them. Some, some even don't access TV. They don't have internet. Mm. Mm. So they don't know how to, to deal with corona. So right. if companies can come through for these people, mm. guys in the remote areas, that will be that will be that will be good. Beautiful. Let's yeah. take a look at your feedback at Citizen TV Kenya is also on Twitter. Use the hashtag Daybreak and double two four double two is our SMS line in case you want to bring in our sending a bigger chunk of your feedback. Let's take a look at that right now. They're coming up on your screens. You don't say who you are, but you say I am a designer and I will sit at home, knit and crochet as much as I can. That's good for you. For for the designer at home. I'm sure this really um, enables you to even get more done. Ibo from Eldoret, good morning. You're saying social distancing has meant no hanging out, but how do people in a church maintain social distance? Uh huh. Um, you don't say who you are, but you say, I'm a musician. The corona thing has really messed us up. We depend on our daily gigs. We feed our families through music. Um, all events are canceled. I wish the government could spread, could speed up and urge Kenyans to follow the laid down instructions. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Um, this is Mutembe. You say Corona has caused social disruption. No more meetings, no more discos, no more karate practices, no more BBI meetings. True. And the reggae music no more social gatherings <laughs> has stopped. Now, all we have been left with is the internet, TV, social media, and it's up to, it's up to us rather to utilize them to the fullest to fill the gap. Kweli, Corona, ni Corona. <laughs> okay, this is Lucas. Good morning, you're actually watching right here in Nairobi. You say over the weekend, I will carry on with my plans as usual, e.g. taking my car for service on Sato, and on Sunday, we will go to church at 6 a.m. You actually say you're a Catholic. After that, we'll rest indoors with my family. In fact, you go on to say that the coronavirus is there, but apart from taking precautions, I dedicate it to God. There are some serious diseases more than coronavirus, like cholera, Ebola, and so forth. Coronavirus is treatable and people should stop too much panic. Although, Lucas, there is no um, vaccination for it and there's no cure at all. But I do like your faith part in that. It does play a big role. Here's the thing, Sheila. Mm -hmm. um, there's one comment that has really stood out for me. Yeah. Is the fact that um, one of our viewers, I believe it was Abel's comment, that has said, as much as this time we're being quarantined, mm -hmm. what are we doing? TV, social media? We just hear so much screen time. What will that do to us and what will that do to our social um, abilities to sort of be able to interact? Because now you're doing this a lot of screen time, whether yeah. it's you or the children. Yes. Yeah. I actually don't think it's a bad thing in terms of people are now using this um, social media, the apps, mm. to, to keep in touch with their people. Like now people are doing meetings on Zoom, on Google Hangouts. Um, I saw something with one of the... Um, Netflix, and now you can do something called a Netflix party. Yeah. Where if this is the three of us, yeah. we decide we want to watch one movie, yep. we all uh, click on the link and we're able to even have comments on the side. And pause it. Yeah, and pause it and you know, laugh about it. I think people are now going to use social media mm -hmm. in a more useful kind of way. You have to use it to be, you know, you still have to be, um, guy, what's the word? Cautious. Cautious, not. Uh, Productive. Productive. That's the word. There you go. The, your so HR renews coming hey, out. It had gone. So yeah. people are now going to use social media to be more productive. Um, yes, there'll be an issue with the screen time, but mm. we really don't have an option now. David, social for you, is the screen time an issue? I the don't too think much so. screen time? Uh, I think, again, it's a good thing. It's a good and a bad thing. Um, people can have a break now. People can be their families. Y if you're in career, you can strategize. If you're in business, you can think of a plan after yeah. this. Yeah. So I think it's better than guys just being all over the place. Mm. I think it's a, because it's, it's, it's a, what we call an unnecessary evil at this particular time. Mm. All right, let's take a quick commercial break. When we come back, I'll be reading more of those feedbacks that you have. And in case you're just tuning in, we're here having a conversation of how social life has gone virtual online because of COVID-19. I want to know, this being a Friday, probably the first official weekend with everyone staying at home, what are you planning to do? Friday, Saturday, Sunday? 
want to even are going to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. What are you planning to do with all this time and how is it affecting your business? Double two four double two is our SMS line at Citizen TV Kenya is us on Twitter. Use the hashtag daybreak. When we come back, I'd love to hear from Sheila and David. How, especially Sheila, how do we draw that line between, especially online, when it comes to, yes, making fun of a situation to get through a tough time, but also when to know when it's too much fun for such a situation. Let's take that break.
my goodness, Sheila tells me she's not getting her manicure done until COVID-19 is over. <laughs> what is it? You're scared that they will ha the virus will hide in your nails. I mean, first of all, it's hygiene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, hygiene is yeah. that. Because you know you're constantly washing mm. your hands. And what if my nails break and we are locked down? You know what? That's a valid reason, <laughs> Sheila. Good for you. <laughs> Here's the thing. Before we took that quick commercial break, I wanted us to have this discussion as well. Um, of how do we divide up? Where is that gray line? Between, yes, making fun of a situation, even if it's a bad situation, to sort of get over it within that time. But also, when is it too much of it? Mm -hmm. Sheila, you're a content creator. You're yeah. constantly online. You make this um, content that goes viral. Mm -hmm. Where do we draw that line between, yes, perhaps making fun of a situation to get through it? Mm -hmm. You know, they say comedy is the best medicine. Yes. Right? But when, again, do you also say, uh, that's a bit too far? Um, I feel, first of all, you know, there's never really, like, a standard of um, moral of moral because yeah. things are very subjective online. Yeah, I can say something, he will get offended, you might not. Mm. However, in my personal opinion, I feel that you should not be making jokes that um, are offensive to someone in that situation. Right. Like now it would not be, like the same thing you were saying, people taking videos of Chinese people in Kenya just living their day-to-day -day lives. Mm. It is very wrong for you to take videos of them and post online or even just attack someone. You know, someone is mm. Chinese or someone is from mm. Italy on your timeline. Mm. Just tell them that's very, very wrong in my opinion. All right. Yeah. David, what about you? How, how do we do that? Like even online, when you're scrolling through your phone, when do you know, okay, this is a hilarious video. Um, let me retweet it, right? This mm. is mm, this is a bit too sensitive. The reason why I ask this is that Kenyans are very notorious for this, whether it is the locals, whether it's BBI, whether it's Machozi Monday. Remember the Tiagas Monday? Yeah. Kenyans mm. always find a humor in something bad, which is good, you know? But when do we draw that line and say, yeah? I think we, uh, before, you, before you make fun of, out of anything, I think first you need to put yourself in the other side. Mm -hmm. If you're the victim, mm -hmm. how you'll take it. Mm -hmm. uh, by that, you become sensitive. I know Kenyans are funny, we are very funny, but mm -hmm. I think uh, we also need a limit in terms of um, what we say online. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Because again, their families affected, their individuals affected, mm, communities affected. So let us be mindful of other people. Mm. Yeah. Okay, here's the other aspect, David. You talked about s do not sell hope, especially for young people when we were having the discussion of unemployment and how that might even end up increasing with COVID-19 and how it's affecting the economy, right? Here it is, David, we already have young people who majority are jobless in Kenya. They are facing their own social challenges at home or within the social circles. Right now, this COVID-19, which is making matters worth, be it, be it food security, be it our economy, it is, it's touching everywhere. Our transport sector, our airline, our tourism, even planners, it's affecting all of us. So how is it that you then tell the government, how can the Kenyan, Kenyan government best tell young people, the ones who are inheriting this nation, us, that as much as things are bad, we still have things in place that, you know, do not sell hope to Kenyans though. Where do we draw that line? How do you tell a young person that things are okay, but this young person is unemployed? Chilla, your HR background, talk to me. Um, first of all, by the time you're telling these young people things are okay, things actually have to be okay. Mm -hmm. Don't, that's the thing, don't sell hope. Don't say you, you have the situation in check and tomorrow if there were 100 cases which are discovered, we may not have the bed capacity mm. to deal with that situation. So it's, it's a really, <laughs> it's not something we can fix right now, but just we need, the government needs to be more mindful. Right. And more present. Mm. I feel sometimes these people just make comments, mm -hmm. like from a place of not knowing. Mm -hmm. You're just saying, oh, you got this, you got this. But you need to be able to make comments on situations having put into account that person who you're telling them self-quarantine. Yeah. But they usually go and do a job for 300 bob a day. There you go. They've not gone to work for five days. What are they, what are they supposed to eat? Mm. And you know, if they get sick tomorrow, what are they supposed to do? They can't go to those big hospitals. Mm -hmm. They don't have insurance. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole systemic failure that we can't fix right now. However, we yeah. can use this as a lesson yeah. to start fixing things slowly. Yeah. Make life more bearable for the regular monainchi. Mm. Yeah. David, as a businessman, I mean, you're the one who came up with that. Don't sell hope. H how do we even begin to encourage Kenyans, young Kenyans, with what is happening? Uh, you see the problem, uh, hope is good, but again, uh, hope makes you sugarcoat a lot of things, even bad things. Mm. Uh, say as it is, as much as you're selling hope, again, what are we doing as a private sector? What are we doing as a... You see, everybody's putting the blame again on the government. Right. But even the private sector, there's so much they could do. Mm. 
actually there's so much they could do. Right now, there's so many things they could do. All the blue chips company we have, there's so many things they could do. Apart from campaigns online, mm. there's so many things they could do on the ground. Leave alone those ones, David. Talk to Mama Mboga, who hasn't gone to the market now for three days. Talk to um, Onyango, his border border business. He does, I don't know, maybe let's say 20 rides in a day. That has gone down to five. Talk to John, who has maybe three, four matatus on the raid. Now they've gone cleared. Talk to those people. That's what I'm saying. You see, if the top, the top did something, it's so easy for these guys at the bottom to support them. Uh, because if I'm, if I'm being given, say, free sanitizer as a border border guy, mm. maybe I can't afford it, okay? Mm. Or oh, Mama Mboga. I'm seeing somebody giving me, even if it's not daily, there's something that I'm seeing happening in my estate. You see, if I get a campaign online, don't do this, chances are I'm going to support it because I'm seeing there's somebody who cares. Yeah. Other than, uh, nasikiatu kuna corona, but... Mm. Uh, every man for himself and God for us all. You see, there's a difference between that. So as much as you're selling hope to these people, uh, I want to put a challenge to not just the government, yes. the private sector. Mm -hmm. What are we doing for the community? Apart from just saying we'll be okay, what are we doing for the community? Go to the rural areas, go to the slums, where the problem is likely to explode. Before it explodes, do something for them. Mm. Like, I would be so happy to see Company X in, say, Kibera. Wow. Company X in Madara and saying, yes. we are containing this situation here. Yes. We've taken these, this area. And it will not actually to not even cost them mm. a lot of money mm. from what they make. Mm. You see? Another company takes initiative. And then the government does something else. Trust me, the whole population will support you. As in, apart from hope, do something, a solution for... Right. Not everybody can afford all these things that you're talking about. Panic buying. Yeah. What what others can do is just their accounts and panicking. And here's the thing. Tomorrow they'll talk about CSR. Isn't this not definitely this CSR? This is the perfect this time to CSR do CSR. you need to be doing. But when you're going to panic by in a less account zone, there's no panic. As right. In, <laughs> do something for the people. Mm. As in, contain the situation. Mm. You see? Wow. There's so definitely. many... Uh, well, 500 bob for a sanitizer. How many... Actually, people live below a dollar. Then you're telling somebody to buy a what, sanitizer. They'll be like... Do I die hungry or do I buy a sanitizer for a disease that I'm not seeing? So they'll become more reckless, you see? Like, we should do something for these people. Even come up with a package. A package with, say, dengu, uh, some rice, and some sanitizer. That's a thousand per person. Mm -hmm. But it'll take them through maybe a week or two mm -hmm. before we figure out the next thing. Right. Wow, uh, definitely a real challenge there coming from David to Kenya's private business sector. What are you doing? Um, to make sure that you're also pulling in and your weight within your social um, circles. Definitely a good call right there. Let's take a look at your feedback. So much of it is coming through our SMS lane. Double two, four, double two is what I'm saying, is what I'm being told rather. Let's um, have a look at that. Abel, you come back and you say studies show social distance leads to depression. How can we prevent this now that we are in this for unforeseeable future? That's right, Abel, and please remember so Takasanga actually has a mental health bill in Parliament which still hasn't been passed. Rashid from Meru, you say, I intend on using this free time to invest heavily on being a couch potato. Good for you, Rashid. I love your honesty. Um, you don't say who you are, but you say, government needs to give us free Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Boka from Kakamega, good morning to you. You say... My concern is on our brothers and sisters behind bars. The court systems that can put them there has closed down. We have police officers who walk in and out and interact with the public and go back to the cells and prisons. This is very true. What is our government thinking about them? And besides, how do you maintain the social distance policy in a lift? Stay home, Collins. Stay home. Let's take a look at the next one. Um, Shalom, you don't say who you are, but you say, Morning, I'm concerned for the teens. And the youth now at home in their rooms with their smartphones. Ah, Sheila Meona. Meona. Uh huh. What measures have the government put in place to prevent them from accessing explicit content from the web? That's actually very true. As much as we want the government to give us free Wi Fi, should, um, Alfred from Eldoret, you say, this corona thing, corona has affected or that has created a lot of confusion in our social life. Handshake has been totally banned in Eldoret. And this <laughs> is a big challenge to our people since it has been a norm greeting each other. You continue to say, 
Also, as part of the planning team for Wasingishu County Eldoret Agri Expo 2020, which has to happen, to, which was to happen on the 20th, that's today, Friday, but we had to postpone until further notice. We're yet to come to terms. Corona is serious. Uh, David, is Alfred one of your 12 clients that you had lost? I'm a summer that corporate event. Ilienda, if you, if you, it was supposed yeah. to happen today. Um, let's see. Adewa, you say, indeed, it's a loss on our economic growth, social interaction, since a lot of premises have closed down. My point of rescue now rests on my livestock, my goodness, to ensure that they thrive on the fullest. And once the corona thing is gone, I earn from them. Good for you, Adewa. Good for you. Um, let's take a look at our last one, Collins from Kakamega. Just like Collins, make sure you can SMS us on 22422 and let us know where you're watching from. Evans, you say, I was just... I just wanted to pray for this country to overcome coronavirus crisis. Amen to that, Evans. Tomorrow's actually a prayer day, according to President Uhuru Kenyatta, who has declared Saturday tomorrow just a national prayer day, and you can do so from the comfort of your home. All right, so we need to sort of wind up the conversation, Sheila and David, but before we do that, perhaps um, I could get your general thoughts, your general view on... Um, we are sort of in March, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have confidence? Do you have, um, are you positive that this will sort of be locked down or retrieved um, in the next one month, let's say so? Um, honestly, uh, this thing can go crazy mm. both ways. It can be contained or we can find ourselves in a really nasty position. Yeah. But I believe if people actually take into account what we are being told to do, you know, wash your hands, don't go out if you're feeling sick, yeah. maintain distance. We can be able to control this thing. Y you know, the reason I'm asking that, Sheila and David, mm -hmm. is because of so much of the comments you're talking about yeah. is that there's also, we're forgetting there's the mental aspect of it. Mm -hmm. For those ones who are being isolated, think about the Kenyans who are in prison and they're just hearing this from their screens. Think about um, family and friends of maybe who, they have someone who's been quarantined, Yeah. right? Th that's what I'm asking. That's, that's, that's the reason why I'm asking that. Just that mental aspect of it the mental health of it, if you'd like to comment on that? Mentally, it's a bit exhausting, mm. especially if you're a very social person. If your day-to-day -day life involved interacting with a lot of people, whether it was, whether it was your um, workmates mm -hmm. or even, you know, just people out there, mm -hmm. you are definitely going to feel a dip in your overall mood and general mood. Mm. Um, As a HR expert or someone who has actually has this background, yeah. mental health, is it something that employers should consider, businessmen and women should consider, especially within their terms and conditions of employment? Look at this where we are right now with COVID-19. Oh, definitely. It's definitely like one of the main things to consider because in the end it affects someone's productivity. Mm -hmm. So even this thing of some employers insisting on guys going to the office when really they can work from home, that panic that they have commuting around Nairobi yeah. to get to work is going to show in their work. Mm. So you'd rather just take into account if it's something you're able to do and let people work from home, just let them stay at home. I mean, David, you, you, you were sharing with us that um, from Saturday till now, you've only left the house once, right? You can think about those ones who are isolated, mental, their mental health. Could you just comment on that as well? And how the best way to be there for someone, if it's a family or it's a friend member who you know has been quarantined or isolated, how can you be there for them? Uh, and that's actually, uh, that's the uh, one of the things I was saying. There's so many things to do. Mm -hmm. We need to factor in everybody in the community. Not everybody has ac access to, see even entertainment in the house, mm. uh, TV or anything. Assuming somebody who is just in the house and there's no TV and you're alone, it's more of a prison than, than uh, an isolation. Mm. So we need to probably spread messages. Right. Uh, keep these guys engaged. Mm. And I believe this thing is going to end at some point. Uh, why I'm hopeful is because it's a global problem one. Right. And a global problem means there's so many guys that want this to end right now, mm. including all the f uh, first world countries. Mm. So it's going to end. But before it ends, let's be mindful of everybody. If you can help someone, uh, if you can spread a good message, if you can do anything to keep guys laughing, do it. Okay. Now here's the thing. We need to sort of wind up. And before I ask you guys for your closing remarks, before even people are being told to go buy sanitizers, you hear a lot of the doctors saying a simple wash your hands routine for 20 seconds at home is enough. 
instead of just panicking and running to buy a mask or anything else. Do you two know how to wash your hands the best way? Before I show you a clip. I know Sheila right now with your manicure <laughs> game, but or are you just going to demonstrate it for me? How would you have washed your hands? I mean, you just get some soap. Yeah, how uh, would you have done rub it? Rub your palms. Yeah. Rub your feet ah, your fingers. We are seeing the people who are paying yeah, attention. Then, yeah, you just rinse them out. Okay, David, ungendu. Unawash mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. Then you in between your fingers. Very true. Then from here to Aye. here. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm prepared. No, you see, mm -hmm. we, we, I've seen the people who are actually paying attention to all of this. We want to take a quick commercial break, yeah? <laughs> I wanted to say, I have never seen men wash their hands as much as they have in the last one week. My goodness, David. No, we only, we only, see only <laughs> that you don't see us. Uh -huh. <laughs> men are now washing their hands. Yeah. I don't believe it. it. Do okay, now <laughs> that you've done that, we need to create space for uh, Kimani Mbuga who is coming up with webbobs. But before that, um, your closing comments, both of you, just your general closing comments. Um, generally, it's just people need to be more mindful about the information they are sharing online. Uh, maybe just a small point is that I have realized there is so much innovation in the last one week in how Kenyans are living their day to day lives. People are avoiding going out there, mm. so they are using a lot of online platforms to get their day-to-day -day stuff done right. and even deliver you guys. So for me, that is really um, great. But mm. in the end, I know we are going to be able to get over this corona right. and our lives can go back to normal. And I hope that you get that manicure soon. There's nothing to worry about. I, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> David, your closing comment? Um, I think what, what I will say is uh, let's be hopeful this thing is going to end faster than you think. Then we can go back to our lives. Uh, personally, I feel exhausted. For that one week I've been in the house, mm. uh, it's, I actually can't do another second and third. Imagine. If you tell me it's going to be a lockdown for one month, I think I'll, at some point I may lose my... They literally, I think things we take for, for granted. Yeah. Like wake, waking up and going to work, yeah. waking up for that freedom, meeting up friends. Mm -hmm. That's what we realize. Mm -hmm. We take so much things for granted. Mm. So anyway, I'm hoping all this is going to end. And uh, as much as People are looking for cure. Mm -hmm. Let's also put God first. Uh, there are things beyond us. And uh, everything is going to be okay. And that right there is the reason why I wanted us to end with that aspect of your mental health, right? Yeah. Um, now, that's that brings us to the end of this conversation here on Social Square. We were just having a discussion on how the social life has now moved virtually online, especially with COVID-19 and the different directives that came from President Uhuru Kenyatta on Sunday. Schools, mosques, churches, less interactions, funerals and weddings having to come to a standstill. All right, we want to take a quick commercial break. I'm told Ki uh, Kimani Mbuko has decided to soft quarantine himself wherever it is that he is so web wars will have to save it for another day we want to take a quick commercial break this is citizen tv stay with us